thank you very much. A year ago, I gave a speech on the Senate floor. In that speech, I asked all my colleagues to join me in condemning all political violence. That obviously included the terrible attack on the Capitol, but it also referred to nearly 600 riots that came before January 6 violence. And I learned something from my colleagues. I have a video I'd like to have you watch. I, I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a, mostly a protest. It is not, generally speaking, unruly. Peaceful protest. <laughs> These uh, anti-police riots rocked our nation for seven full months, just like the January 6th assault on the Capitol rocked the nation. The riots caused terrible damage. You saw on the video, $2 million worth. You saw on the video, hundreds of people were charged federally. The FBI opened over 500 domestic terrorism investigations. Over 14,000 were arrested by the states in just the first few weeks. At least 25 died. 2,000 police officers were injured. This included well over 100 officers defending the federal courthouse in Portland. It included 60 Secret Service officers defending the White House. The Judicial Conference reported that 50 federal courthouses were damaged during this time. Throughout a time that was incredibly difficult for our police officers, we had some Democrats pile on. They called police things like stormtroopers. To this day, attacks continue on good rumors of the police or the good names of police who dealt with an impossible situation in the 100 night uh, siege on Portland Courthouse. Is it any wonder then that when it came time to secure the Capitol on January 6, some were too concerned about optics or about the image of National Guardsmen at the Capitol. Mayor Bowser of D.C. even said that when federal police court, like those police forces, like those that came to defend the Portland current courthouse, that they wouldn't be welcome here. 
from the time anti-police riots broke out over 18 months ago, the police have retreated from the streets, and the results have been very predictable. Beginning June 2020, our country has experienced an unprecedented 30 percent hike uh, in murders. That spike has continued all the way to the present day. In 2021, more than a dozen cities set all-time homicide records. Street crime, from assaults to carjacking, uh, to also what we call flash mob style smash and grab robberies have become a way of life in many cities. You saw it just last night in San Jose, California on television as an example. New York Mayor Eric Adams has announced he will revive a plain clothes anti-crime unit to combat the violence. San Francisco Mayor London Breed has declared a state of emergency over crime in her cities. Mayor Lightfoot has asked for federal resources to help fight crime in Chicago. Sadly, anti-police sentiment extends to the rise of murder of police. Dozens were killed in 2021. FBI analysis showed that many of them were targeted because they were just simply police officers, not because of any private contract, contact with an attacker. The federal order, Fraternal Order of Police, that data shows that ambush attacks on officers have been more than doubled. The police aren't just heroes because of January 6th when they defended us here at the Capitol. These police officers, federal, state, local, are heroes all the time. If we don't treat them as heroes, I fear the violent crime and attacks on police officers will only get worse. It won't get any better. I started by saying that I gave a speech a year ago asking my colleagues to join me in condemning all political violence. I heard Senator Durbin say exactly that same thing in his opening remarks today. I'm sorry to say that the situation hasn't gotten worse. The situation has gotten worse since I gave my speech. It has not gotten better. Last summer, President Biden released a domestic terrorism strategy that made, made no mention whatsoever of the 2020 riots, though they comprise about a fifth to a quarter of the FBI's current domestic terrorism cases. There was almost no mention of left-wing terrorism at all. Thanks, Senator Durbin, for mentioning left-wing terrorism. Further, the president's strategy suggested that partisan policies of gun control and teaching critical race theory are part of the solution. Using violent attacks to try to advance unrelated policy goals is a shameful tactic. It undermines what our law enforcement officers are trying to do to stem the violence in this country. It undermines the universal nonpartisan indictment that we should all bring to bear against extremist violence, right or left. There can't be exceptions. That means that we have to deal with the 2020 riots and January 6th when we look over FBI domestic terrorism programs. We in Congress have an oversight role to perform. This committee is doing that today. And there is room for improvement, needed room for improvement. Director Ray, over 10 months ago, testified to us that there were weaknesses in the left-wing domestic terrorism program that had prevented the FBI from getting 
the visibility they needed into the 2020 riots. From that time to now, we have received next to no information in response to our inquiries about how the FBI intends to cure those deficiencies. The time has come to change that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and my